This is James Helder for IFL TV in association with Macklin's Jim Marbella. I'm in Rosal ABC today. With me, I've got Daniel Woodgate. Um, what's happening, Daniel? You all right, mate? How you doing, mate? You all right? I'm all right. It's been a little while since we caught up. How have you been keeping? Yeah, good, mate. Yeah, yeah. Training hard. Good. good. Um, I know you're training now in Rosal ABC with Ian Burbage. Can you talk to me a little bit about how this sort of link-up came about? Yeah, I had um, my, my first fight of last year, uh, 2015. I, I trained myself for the fight. Um, the week before the fight, I, I spoke to... Uh, Mickey Elliott and just said who was who was like on the show, which trainers. Uh, he told me Ian had a boy on, so I contacted Ian and said, no, help me do my corner. Um, just went from there, really, really, really liked what we'd done in the corner, nice and relaxed, and it's how I like it, really. Um, basically, because I'd moved away from, from where I was living, so sort of it was too much for me travelling back with my old trainer. Um, yeah, so for that one, I trained myself, and then. Uh, yeah, I moved. I then moved back. <laughs> um, so I went back. My old trainer had a fight in last. I think it was July. Um, but then I moved away again. <laughs> so now I'm, I'm, I'm here with Ian. Yeah. yeah. You've spent quite a lot of time fighting that light heavyweight. I know you're coming yeah. for the Southern Era title against Leon Senior. Yeah. You're now going to be competing at the Cruiserweight division. Notably, a big fight coming up. Seven yeah, yeah. Era contest, 27th of February against Woody Camacho. How, how are you finding, firstly, being at Cruiserweight and <clears throat> being a bit more maybe a bit more comfortable? And a bit more movement. Right? I love it, mate. Honestly, yeah. I mean, I was always a cruiserweight as an amateur. Um, believe it or not, I boxed a couple of times as an amateur. I was like 16 half stone, um, and always carried the weight well. I was never, I was never like overweight, as in like fat, fl flabby, or anything like that. I was just, just a big lad. Um, and then when I turned over, I decided I weren't quite tall enough for cruiser, so I went like heavy, um, and I was just killing myself making the weight, mate. Um, doing ridiculous things like losing a stone overnight to make wait for weigh-ins and then putting a, like, a stone half back on um, just punishing my body and like, after every fight I was ill like proper ill for weeks afterwards um, and uh, it, it worked yeah it was just like when I was going back in the gym after the fight it was like starting from scratch again it weren't like I was going back in there and I had what, whatever 70 percent left from from the training camp before it was it was back to zero and and starting again and at cruiserweight, I'm just uh, yeah, just like eating well. Still have to watch what I eat. I don't, I don't make the weight easy. I mean, I don't walk around at cruiserweight. I've, I'm whatever, like 14, 10 at the moment. I'm in pretty good shape, as you can well see. Well, you, are looking, you are looking in good nick, mate. You are looking in good yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm not like I haven't, I haven't had to do anything drastic to come up the weight. It's not as if I'm going in the gym like doing bodybuilding weights or anything like that, trying to whack muscle. I'm, if anything, I'm still trying to take it off. So. Yeah, I'm feeling good, mate. I'm really enjoying it. Woody Camacho, obviously, he's won the prize fighter. He's mixed it at a good level in the cruiserweight division. Yeah, yeah. He's already had the Southern area title as well. Obviously. Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure about what's, um, what he's actually won and what he's not. But. What, what I mean is, is it a good chance for you to see what level you're at and test yourself, maybe against a good a good name opponent? Yeah, do you know what? It's it's one of the things that I am. I don't know how good I am. Do you know what I mean? I've I've only really been in with fighters that have I've sold tickets, took the fights. Um, and some people get a bit frustrated with that, but they've got to understand. For me, that's frustrating for me as well. Do you know what I mean? I want, to, I want these sort of fights. When I got offered the fight with uh, Camacho, I was like, yeah, take it. Do you know what I mean? It's a good, it's a good levelling stick for me. If I ain't, and it, this is no disrespect to Wadi Camacho, Wadi Camacho is a good fighter. If I don't beat him, then where can I go? Do you know what I mean? Um, so, yeah, it's, if, if I win that, then I, I think, yeah, I've, I've got it to, to go on and um, push on for bigger titles. But like I say, if, if I can't beat Camacho, then I've got, to have, I've got to have a serious look at what I'm doing. Do you know what I mean? Real interesting fight. As I said, Waddy's sort of on the comeback trail. Yeah, trying yeah. to kick on. You're trying to make your name for yourself <coughs> now at Cruiserweight. So yeah. it could be quite an explosive contest. Yeah, I think so. It's one. Of, oh, it's, it's been an absolute nightmare in the build-up to this fight. I think I've come across as a bit of a dickhead a couple of times on Twitter. I've, I've, it's almost seemed like I'm really digging him out, but I've not. I've, I've just like I've tweeted him, and, and I've had nothing back from him. I don't know. I don't know what's happening. Like to to the point where it actually made. I was getting frustrated with myself. I, was, I kept tweeting him and kept tagging him in things and stuff like that. But it wasn't. It's nothing personal. Do you know what I mean? I'm just trying to build a fight. Um, it's it's a big fight, and I, I want everyone to be there. Do you know what I mean? I want people to see what I think I'm capable of. So that's why I'm, that's why I'm doing that. It's. Um, but I, I think I'm a bit of a victim of the, um, obviously, Mickey Helliot's promoting the show. Um, Wadi Camacho, Steve Goodwin's fighter. Mickey beat him by a fraction to the, um, 
to the purse bids. And I've, I've got a feeling that Steve sort of told him not to help build the show at all, and stuff like that, which is, I mean, that's up to them, do you know what I mean? They'll do what they want, but um, I sort of suffer from it because I'm, I'm trying to build a fight and I'm talking to myself. <laughs> Not for the first time on my ad. Yeah, I know, no, I do, yeah. I talk to myself quite a lot, to be honest. The drinks are getting a lot more entertaining. Sometimes I thought it was a little bit like Warren Milner, but you are getting a bit more entertaining on Twitter, I've got to say. No, do you know what? I, I think it's actually my tagline on Twitter that sometimes I even bore myself. I, don't, I think I am quite a boring person, to be honest. I, I take things a bit too seriously at times. Um, but yeah, no, I've, I've, I've jumped in there when I needed to jump in there. Um, I try not to be disrespectful. Um, hopefully, it hasn't come across that way. Because at the end of the day, we're both both fighters, both training hard, both doing what we've got to do. Um, but yeah, I'm just, I'm just looking forward to seeing him on the uh, on the 26th at weigh in, and then on the 27th when we get in the ring together. Indeed. Hopefully, we get to see some kind of press conference or something. Like yeah, that. I mean, I don't think it'll turn up. I don't think it'll turn up. I don't think they're going to do anything to help trying to build the fight. Um, Steve Goodwin came out in an interview the other day, and um, he said that it's, it's Mickey Elliott's job to build the fight and promote the show, well that's true, but how can he do that when one of the one of the, uh, one of the fighters ain't willing to play, do you know what I mean, ain't willing to play ball, so yeah, it's a strange one, uh, and, and poor form in my eyes, but it's business isn't it, that's how they want to deal with it, how they want to deal with it, and like I say, it's nothing personal, I'm, I'm, I'm friends with Steve, and even after, I feel like I've been let down by him a little bit in this, but as far as um, personal side of it goes, I'm, I'm still his mate, it's just the business side of it, I, I, been a little bit disappointed with him so does that sort of make you want to channel all your sort of not energy but disappointment into your training camp and put that little um, bit more in I don't really uh, I don't really fight on emotion I don't really train on emotion I train I train I, I've, I've said it before I when I go into the gym the thing that gets me up in the morning going to the track on my own pushing myself through the sprints on my own getting to a point where I think I can't do no more and then doing some more the thing that puts me up is the fear the fear of I'm not, I'm not scared of any man, but it's, it's the fear of losing, the fear of letting my, my friends, my family, and going back to my children and my wife after the fight and, and, and looking them in the eyes and saying, sorry, I just, just weren't good enough. And I, I, I mean, that, that may well happen, but as far as I'm concerned, every single second I put into this training camp has been exactly how it should be. Um, and, it's, and it's just getting harder now, and I'm, I'm, I'm well up for the last few weeks. I'm not looking forward to them, but I'm well up for them. February the 27th, we shall find out at your call. Tickets available. That's it, mate, yeah. Um, holler at Mickey Elliott or even, even at the don't, don't, don't speak to Mickey Elliott, speak to me. Speak to Woodgate. <laughs> yeah, get in touch with me on, um, on Twitter, at IFTK Woody. Um, same on Instagram. And just follow me on Facebook as well, um, Dan Woodgate or Daniel Woodgate. You'll see me on Facebook. Yeah, I mean, if, you, if you're interested in boxing, surely it's got to be a fight that some people are interested in. Um, yeah, I mean, I. Uh, I don't suppose the, the crew is a way to draw in many in these lower levels, but um, I think this is going to be one that's going to sort of rekindle a little bit of uh, fire in the cruiserweight division. Because after this one, I've come through this one, um, I'm going for the big boys afterwards. So that's that's the plan. We shall see who gets bragging rights for the yeah, mate, southern yeah. area cruiserweight. That's title. it, mate. Yeah, no, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it. It'll be a good fight. Um, yeah, just I'm ready, mate. I'm ready to go whenever. Okay, thank you for giving me a bit of time today, mate. No, mate, cheers for coming Good over. I appreciate it, yeah. Show. Yeah, no, cheers, mate. I appreciate it. I keep messaging uh, you and uh, Cassius, but never get anything back. Do you know what I mean? No, no, us little Kent boys. No, don't give me all that. Us little Kent boys thrown out. I thought you were too busy being like <laughs> mayor of Kent, you know what I mean? Yeah, well, I, was, I spent a lot of time ironing my suits, you know, so. Okay. <laughs> always got to say, you always do look very smart in the shows. Oh, like today with nothing on. <laughs> I'm not going to comment on that. I'm not going to comment on that at all. you can't see down below because I'm wearing nothing. <laughs> Just to clarify, Woodgate's got shorts on, we don't, we don't get down. Woodgate, thank you for giving me some time today, mate. Nice one. Cheers, mate. Appreciate it.